Hey everyone, I'm Erin and welcome to the Cardboard Republic. We are coming to you right now with a haul video. We're going to go over all of the games that we got in in the month of April and warning, it's a long list. First up, we have Kodama the Tree Spirits. So this is a small game and it's a card laying game. But unlike a lot of card laying games, you're not putting the cards down in like a linear way, you know, you're laying them out organically to form this really beautiful tree. So cards branch off of other cards and as long as all the art connects, you're fine. Once you get them all made up on the table, it looks really, really pretty. So I'm excited to give it a try. Next up we have Karuba. This is a Haba game and Haba is generally known for their kids games and for really little kids too, things like Rhino Hero and Animal Upon Animal. But they're trying to break out into the family games market, so Karuba is one of the first titles that's doing that. In this game you're all trying to find ways through the jungle to these temples. You have four little meeple on the side of your board and you're laying down tiles that form a maze. The goal is to lay down the tiles in such a way that you can get all four of your explorers to their temples. It looks a little challenging, but still achievable, and I really like the quality that Haba generally puts out, so I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with this. Next up, we have this little expansion, Scoville Labs. It's really cool because it gives you your own personal pepper plot, which Ryan made me say three times fast when we unpacked it. Pepper plot, pepper plot, pepper plot. And on that personal pepper plot, you get to plant all of the peppers that you want for crossbreeding purposes, of course. Other players cannot steal peppers from your personal pepper plot. They can only steal them from you on the communal lot. So it gives you maybe a little leg up, but of course all the other players have their own personal pepper plots too. The second reason why we're super excited for this is in Fuego Republica. This little card is one based on our site. You can see our little colors there and it's awesome to have this in a game. Next up, we have Boomtown Bandits. This is a fast-paced dice rolling game about a bunch of people trying to rob a boomtown, clearly. In this game, you are all playing as bandits. When you try to rob the same location as another player, you have a roll-off with all your dice. It's pretty fast-paced, should be interesting. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> See what I did there? And in another super shiny box, so I'm sorry for the glare, we have Circular Reasoning. This was a Mensa Select winner, so obviously it's a very thinky sort of game. You are trying to move your pieces to the center of a few concentric circles. You have to travel through these gates, the gates are always moving, and depending on which piece you choose, it can move in different ways. From what I've heard, the game can get very passive aggressive, so I'm looking forward to trying it, but anticipating that I probably won't do very well and might come away from it with like fewer friends. We got in another abstract game this month too, that's the Game of 49. This interestingly though, it's an abstract auction game, which you don't see too too often. A lot of times auction games have some sort of theme to them. But in the Game of 49, you are all bidding on these 49 squares on the board, and the first player to successfully acquire four of them in a row wins. I'm generally way too cheap for auction games, so I probably won't be the best one to try this out, but I know several people in our game group who love them. Next up we have Onitama, which is actually another abstract game. Onitama is a two-player tactical game where you are moving your pawns around the board trying to capture the other players. Every round you have new cards that come out that tell you how those different pieces can move. It is really tactical, I've heard that it is challenging, but very beautiful and very fun. So this is a game that Ryan is going to definitely dig. And then we have World's Fair 1893. So this is actually our May Indie Game of the Month. It's really pretty, it's really fun to play. Also, the World's Fair in 1893 was a super important moment in American history. One, because it's a World's Fair, so always important. Two, because it also marked the occasion of the first American serial killer. But I promised Ryan that I wouldn't talk about that instead of talking about the game. So I'm not gonna talk about H.H. Holmes. Nope. Instead, I'm going to talk about how this game has a really unique action selection mechanic. You place your little token down and you're collecting exhibitions and midway tickets 
the whole point of the game is to be the best World's Fair planner and end the game with the most points and the most prestige. You do that by putting your little dude down, collecting little things, having the best exhibitions, and managing to take actions in the right spots. It's a little hard to describe verbally, but it works really, really well, and it's really, really pretty when you actually play it. Just don't stay in the hotel. Another game with a random year in the title, although I guess World's Fair wasn't really random, but 2230 AD. Res Publica, 2230 AD. I mean, unless something interesting is set to happen in 2230 AD that I don't know about, that's definitely just a random year. But anyway, Res Publica 2230 AD is a card-based Civ building game. But unlike a lot of other card-based Civ building games, this is not a tableau game. So it's not a game like Race for the Galaxy is, where you lay out your cards in front of you to build your civilization. Instead, it's a trading card game that's still a civ building game, and I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so bear with me on this one. Millennium Blades is a two-hour board game about a group of friends playing a collectible card game. You play as one of those groups of friends, collecting different cards, trading different cards, moving through tournaments. You can actually sort of make it into a legacy style game where you play several times and each time you like proceed to a different tournament level. Um, this game is definitely not for everyone. I lose most people at two hour CCG simulation, but I'm really excited for it. This is another really, really heavy game. It's like just dense, like not in dense as in like difficult to play, just dense as in like there's a lot of cardboard in this one little box. The game is actually really manageable. Skyway Robbery is about a group of, you know, criminals traveling around on an airship in the steampunk universe. Every turn you select three cards, lay them face down, it has a little bit of a programming aspect there and flip them over simultaneously. Everyone takes their actions. Usually these are getting more people onto your crew or performing illegal acts. At the end of the game, the person who's basically been the most successful heisting is the winner. We had a chance to preview this one back a while ago and it was really fun. So I was looking forward to getting the like real copy and seeing what's changed. We also got in our copy, finally, of Legends of the American Frontier. This is a Richard Launius game. That's the designer behind Arkham Horror, which I think I've talked excessively, probably, about how much I, I love Arkham Horror. Okay, so I'm excited about this game, but kind of cautiously so, and I'm gonna talk about why. Legends of the American Frontier takes place during America's expansion to the West, European America's expansion to the West, right after the Revolutionary War. And that was a tricky point in American history. It was maybe not our proudest time. And I'm curious to see how that's handled in this game. Um, I think until I, I see that that's done well, I'm not going to be able to throw my full weight behind it, but I'm going to give it a try and, and we'll see what happens. Now, moving to the completely opposite side of the earth, we have Zhang Guo. In this game, which is set during the first empire in China, you are playing as a worker under the emperor. It is your job to help improve infrastructure and draw the different provinces together to solidify the emperor's rule. You also need to make sure you get a little, you get a little something for yourself on the side. You want the most power, you want to be the best assistant the Emperor has. But if you skew too far towards the personal profit side, the populace will get angry and there could be uprisings. So you really have to balance how much you're willing to give to the nation and how much you really need to keep for yourself. That's where I think a lot of the tension in the game is going to come through. This was our Architect Game of the Year for 2015, and we loved it so much that we now own our own copy, and one of our friends owns their own copy. So there you go. Zhang Guo. Speaking of our 2015 Game Awards, Blood Rage is our 2015 Striker Award, and we went out and got our own copy again because we loved it so much. 
Well, Ryan loved it so much. This is definitely not my kind of game. It is way too in your face for me. Blood Rage is set during the Viking apocalypse, during Ragnarok, and you are playing as a clan leader trying to secure the most glory for your clan. To do that, you go on quests, but mostly to do that, you fight other Vikings. The whole thing is very, very combative, of course, and from what I've heard, for people who like that style of gameplay, very, very fun. We're almost there. Almost. You can do this. Room Service is a pick up and deliver game about gathering the ingredients for and dropping off potions. Every turn, players lay out a card, and that can be a strong card or a cowardly card. The strong card is a riskier option, but could end up netting you more points. The cowardly card is a safer option, but you would get less points for it. The whole point of the game is to kind of bluff your opponents into thinking that you're going to lay out a cowardly card or you're going to lay out a risky card, and the player at the end with the most points wins. It's not my kind of game, probably, but I think my group is going to really like this, so I'll definitely give it a try. Next up, we have Craft Wagon. This is a very German game with a very American theme. In Craft Wagon, you are the CEO of a fledgling car company, and you have to balance your production goals. Do you create a car that your customers absolutely love, or do you create a car that your customers can actually afford? It's a pretty tricky balance, but you can do it, because you have a ton of different actions that you can take in this game, like most Euros. There's a lot of moving things around and slightly adjusting your strategy as you go, which I'm all for. I'm gonna give it a shot, I'll let you know what I think. Finally, last but not least, we have Nurushima Convoy. This is an asymmetrical card game. One player plays as the, like, robot overlord people, traveling on a convoy through the wasteland. Every time they reach a new town, they try to take it over, destroy it, you know, robot things. The other player plays as the towns, the settlements along the way, and they have to face off against these robots. Ultimately, the whole goal of that other player, the human player, is to delay the robots long enough that they can build up their strength so that they actually stand a chance in the final battle at the end of the game. We are actually giving this game away as part of our Patreon campaign. So if you're interested in maybe winning a copy and you maybe have a couple bucks to spare every month, go ahead over to our Patreon. We'll have a link right here and you can get your hands on it. Okay, but that is April. That's our April haul video and we are going to get all of these games to the table as soon as we can. We've actually been doing really well with game nights lately, so I, act, I, I think it's achievable. I think we can do it. We'll report back once we are able to play them, and you can check out those reviews as well as news and other content like our awesome podcast, which I also co-host, over at CardboardRepublic.com. If you like this video, please like and subscribe down below, and in the comments, you can tell us what games you got in during April and what you're excited to try. That's all for now, but we'll be back again soon with more videos for you. Bye! We also have World's Fair 1893, right? Yes. In the comments, you can let us know what games you got in during the month of April and what you're really excited to give a shot to. Breaking games. Why? Why so glossy? Players are trying to steal the peppers from your pepper plot, but you need to plant more peppers than their peppers so that they can't steal all of your peppers, and then you need to crossbreed the peppers in your own personal pepper plot. I really liked tongue twisters as a kid.